okay, so here we are. This is a, the first of our um, mastermind sessions. Hopefully we'll do more of these. Um, for those of you watching this after the fact, or if you, if you just joined, my name is Jerry Deer and I'm the vice president of the green team. Um, I'm going to have each of you uh, introduce yourselves as people come on and uh, just tell us what your position is and, and what you do. So uh, let's start with Roger since he's my president. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jerry. I'm Roger Rucker with Primerica and I'm, I sit in the life insurance seat with the green team. I'm also the chapter president and I help really help people understand their life insurance needs. Julie? I am Julie Barth. I'm the president of the Troy and I am also Jerry's business partner. <laughs> Just so we know there's no conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, to be clear on how we, this came about, uh, if you did not see the emails or whatever, um, I know our director, uh, director um, coordinator and, and help huge help Mark Strickler sent some information out uh, and invited everybody to come to this thing. So if you get a chance to listen to it, that's great. The concept of this is pretty simple. Uh, the, the purpose was to be an inclusive discussion uh, with other chapter leaders to identify some of the problems that we're all having right now, especially smaller chapters that might be more isolated or if there are a lot of chapters nearby and they send, tend to be larger or they may have their primary, what I would consider primary categories filled um, which is your lawyer, the real estate agent, things like that. Um, and then there, there might be issues on the outside. Uh, one of it, for example, what prompted this was uh, a power team of, of people who are getting all the referrals between each other and they're using each other's services. And that's great. We, we want to continue to, to support that. But at the same time, there are groups in each of the chapters that are not getting that kind of, uh, that kind of shareable uh, referral base. So if there's a way to increase those things, talk about some of the difficulties now with COVID, the typical issues that we have as, as small business owners, and even someone that might be working for a larger company, um, those problems are now exacerbated and, and indeed magnified uh, by the problem that we have to, that we have to contend with now of, of being so isolated and separated from people. So um, uh, just I just threw this back in here. This is our what we typically run in our meeting, which just reminds you the basics of uh, doing a Zoom meeting. So just uh, follow those typical uh, rules as we go. Um, so uh, we've had our, our kind of introductions, and as people come in, if we get more folks for this first meeting, we'll certainly pause and allow them to do that. Uh, this is where the idea came came into, which was to have uh, the chapter leaders. Um, give a specific issue, and I'm, I'm gonna turn that over to, to each of you in a second here. And then we'll have kind of a guided discussion with some topics related to these things, and we'll try to see if we can come up with some ideas. Um, no, nobody anywhere thinks we're gonna solve any of this today. <laughs> but what we can do is at least recognize we have some issues, uh, be okay with that, because that's why we have these networks of people. This is why Ivan Meisner and other people who started organizations like this started it was so you had a better uh, kind of a think tank of people that can really help you and uh, we've all run into things but I think the world is a little different now how have things changed um, the difficulties are facing with the pandemic versus uh, end of year we're going into a new season um, the holidays are here I mean there's a lot of reasons that slowdowns happen so we're going to come back to that here in just a second so uh, let me move on to the next piece this gives our sort of our agenda uh, we're going to talk about increasing outside referrals overall. How can we do that? Um, growth in the time of COVID. How do we get new visitors, new members? And then what do we do next? Are we, should we table things, talk again, you know, whatever we can do with that. Hopefully this will spur some ideas with everyone else and we'll, we'll get some more participation, more participation on the next. So um, I'm going to start with uh, Julie had an original, uh, an issue that came up in her uh, BNI and we're going to avoid names and, and positions if we can here. We don't want to put anybody on the spot. But at the same time, I think maybe there's a little bit of we need to put more people on the spot in a part of this. <laughs> Julie, you want to tell your story? The uh, issue we've been having is just with people being engaged in the meetings and even just attending. Uh, having accountability with whether or not during this time we should be 
being really diligent about taking attendance because there's so many reasons why people couldn't come. But now that they're all Zoom based, it seems like a lot of those reasons are not uh, accurate anymore. Whereas, you know, people were quarantining, they wouldn't be able to come. Things like so, that. So how have you guys addressed any of this or have you yet? Uh, we have basically told people that, you know, now that the new uh, leadership came in in October that we were going to be a lot more diligent about it. And, you know, we've given everybody five or six months to figure things out and that now they need to just, you know, really start being accountable for themselves the way that we're supposed to be. But I don't know that it's helping. <laughs> did that happen? Did you do that recently? Or is that a, a thing that I know that you was, and I have talked about, we sort of said it, Roger and I talked about this when we first started up our new, our, our new uh, leadership team in October was, okay, everybody should be comfortable and used to Zoom now. Um, there's not a whole lot of reasons for missing at this point, unless you actually have COVID, which believe it or not, we've had three. We, we've had four. Four. Four people who are in out of what, 16 who actually had it. Mm -hmm. So two of the guys, while they had it, showed up to meetings. So that lost a lot of credibility with anybody <laughs> with me that said, I can't be there. I've got a sniffle. So um, I'm just kidding. But really, if someone's working hard to be there and they want to participate. So how, how have you dealt with this? Has there been a discussion like long before or just recently? Or did you put it out there to people? Hey, you know what? We really need to pay attention to this because our numbers are down. And we know from historical uh, data with BNI that when the numbers of attendance go down, so do the thank you for closed business and the overall sales in the, in the group. So how long ago did you start talking about this? Well, we put it out there at the beginning of October when our new leadership went in. Um, and then about two weeks ago, we made sure everybody knew that from now on, you know, we've given people time, uh, probably mid-November, we were like, look, this is really going to be a problem now. We're going to start actually paying attention, putting all the data in. Because we were having an issue with data collection through the app. Well, yeah, you had a technical glitch too, didn't you? Yeah, one of my officers couldn't put his data in. So we had some problems with that. But in theory, that's worked out now. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I even have a comment on that. Uh, please. You know, because our chapter, we did have one person that um, you know, wasn't comfortable with Zoom. And as far as the video conferencing part of it. And so, um, you know, we have a couple of people that use the telephone number where they call in and they're involved in the meeting. You know, they're involved just on the voice side. And that's okay because Zoom does accommodate people who use the dial in number. And one issue too is if you happen to be in a, an area that doesn't have a lot of good uh, data coverage. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we had somebody like that as well, that you can use the phone number and, you know, that's, that's not an issue. We don't want everybody to do that all the time because you need to see the presentations people are doing. You need to see each other. There's a, I think there's a, um, oh, I don't know what it is. It's more of a, there's more of a personal connection. Yeah. It, it's that, it's that face. whole networking and, and face to face and seeing each other. Cause some of us have not seen each other face to face since this thing started at all. Right. And now with, with our group, having more people who actually have it, we don't want to take the risk of possibly exposing other people to it. So it's, you know, it's been kind of an issue. So, um, and, and I'm, I'm with Roger there. You've got the, you got the phone numbers, you've got, um, you've got the web version you have, you can zoom works well on an app. I mean, I think it works pretty well on just about any phone. They've done a lot in the last eight or nine months to beef it up. So it was a good choice by B&I. I'm, I'm grateful they picked that one. Um, well, yeah, think, we've, we've got go several people that just call in because some of them are service professionals and by 7.30, they're on their way to their first job. So they're in their car. So they're just listening on their phones. Okay, so that brings me to another part of this. And so we're talking about, I'm, I'm check marking these things off. So this looks like an attendance. Attendance is a big thing. So that is clearly something that will affect the entire function of the chapter. Attendance affects your, your dollar amount. It affects the engagement of your, of your uh, members. It does a lot to draw people to thinking that, that this is an important part of their day and that BNI is part of your sales activity. I mean, no matter what you're doing, we're all salesmen. If we own the business, we're, we're salespeople. We have to do it 
whether we own it or we're selling for somebody else. So I think with the attendance concept here, um, you, Julie, you said something about, well, somebody's already on their way to their first job. Well, what if you were having an in-person meeting? Why, why, can I, why can they not schedule that out? Because you've already committed to this and I get it, but you know, I'm, I'm a little hardliner on this. I worked in service business for a long time and I- No, the, those people are actually showing up. They're the ones that are on the phone in the car. So I don't have a problem with those ones. Okay, but I, and I know I'm not talking about that one, but I mean like yeah. if somebody says, well, I have an appointment at 7.30, why did you make an appointment at 7.30 on that day? Yeah. Granted, we have some weird things now with COVID and scheduling can be a little hard sometimes. But it shouldn't be a regular thing, is what I'm no. saying. I mean, it, it, it happens once in a while. I mean, we all have that. We have kid issues. We have, you know, somebody's sick. You've got whatever's going on. Um, there's just other ways that you can handle it. So if the when we were in person, we were all blocking out this time. So it should be the same. Yes, exactly. So yes. that's kind of my point. I'm not doing well at getting there. But the attendance side of it, of you know, is this going to be a priority? And I think that has to do with feeling a little disconnected. I think that the priority of the meeting is not as vital in some ways because they don't get to go there and physically be and mm -hmm. all of that stuff that, that those of us in that kind of business or, or have done networking for many years, that's part of it. I, I have no problem with the Zoom thing. I'm, I'm actually more comfortable one-on-one -on -one this way than I would be in, a, in the in the group in, in a lot of ways, so I don't care. But I still, that that meeting is part of my regimen. I mean, I've been doing it for 20 years. It's just like, it's it's gotta be there. Mm -hmm. So fixing the, the attendance problem has a little bit to do with engagement. So I think the hard, to me, one of the hardest things is getting people to stay engaged with the distancing, with the, the COVID and the, and the Zoom calls and all that stuff it's not the same as knowing you're going to see that person, you're going to go get coffee afterward, or you're going to, you know, the, the whole mentality is different, but I think we've had enough time to adjust now. I think. And what do you guys well, say about that? I think it's also difficult just to keep people on task because I've seen people many times, even though they're on video, they're looking at other things and they're, you wouldn't do that in person at a meeting. I mean, some people do, but <laughs> Most of us would not, you know, ignore someone while they're speaking in person and look at our phones, but they Some, don't seem to have a problem doing it on Zoom. Something I notice is the cameras going off when the 10 minute presentation starts. Roger, have you noticed that too? I've noticed some of that. Um, the only time I can tell you, the only time I turn my camera off is if I need to get up. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to take a second to go to the restroom or something's going on in my office. Maybe the heat needs to be turned on or something. I don't know. And I just missed it just because I don't want an empty chair to sit here, but I've gotten to the point now where I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just leaving the camera on. I stand yeah. up. You can tell what I'm doing. You can see I'm not doing yeah. something else. Mm -hmm. And I, I just feel like that engagement is part of that. We, we need to try to encourage the membership. Hey guys, leave your cameras on, leave your, you know, pay attention to what they're presenting to you. Mm -hmm. If you can watch this thing on the app on zoom, please do because someone spent time putting these things together um, well, and one thing that you mentioned to me that I didn't, that our group is not very good about is having the speaker have some sort of a, a visual aid or, you know, show them around their office or something to keep people interested because we're not as good at that about sharing a screen and that kind of thing. Because I think that would help keep people engaged in the meeting if they have something to look at or something to interact with. Well, that happens even in live meetings. I mean, if, if you have things that you have to see, then that's one thing. I remember there was an episode of Mad Men where they needed the, the sales guys to pay attention to something that they were watching. So the person doing that gave out cookies. <laughs> it's a reward for, we, you know, you should be rewarded for your time. So they gave cookies out. And that's, so I actually did that when I did a 10 minute presentation a few years ago. I, I remembered that I brought <laughs> cookies along and I gave everybody a cookie. And with the cookies came a question. So were you paying attention at the end? I'm going to give you a quiz. Um, and so little things like that can make a difference. So we need ideas to get people engaged. Does that mean maybe uh, something that maybe hasn't been done or maybe it's been done somewhere else and hasn't reached us yet? Altering the, the feel of the 10 minute presentation so that it maybe is more adapted to this type of 
thing, like Julie mentioned, more visual aids. Um, I know there's lots of times in our chapter when people, when we were just in person, somebody didn't bring something or they're not, they're not, they're kind of, I don't know, creatively challenged that way. And they just got up and talked. And sometimes that generated a lot of cool questions, but it's different because the person is there and you're interacting with them. Right. And the, it, the visual aid isn't quite as important. It's really great to have them and it's better always. But what, what do you think, Roger? I'm kind of babbling at this point about that, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think um, the in-person, the engagement absolutely is, is higher um, because, you know, you're, you're getting good eye contact from the speaker to the individuals and, and, you know, back and forth. When we're on Zoom and it's, you know, you have the PowerPoint up and, you know, maybe five little pictures across the top, it's not the eye contact with everyone all at once. Um, the other, the other thing, um, you know, I'll use the example a few weeks ago where we had a person that, in their presentation, they went through and did kind of, you know, kind of the, the um, trivia quiz for their area for their area of expertise, and at the end, they actually gave out gift cards, and yeah. they, you know, they sent the gift cards by mail afterwards. And I thought that was a really, really good um, way of doing that um, because you got. You know, you got the question and answers and, you know, it, it, it kind of told you, okay, pay attention in their, in their presentation because I'm going to ask you these things afterwards. And, um, you know, I think we've done, uh, we've had a lot of that um, when we were in person and for some of the people who've been there for a long time, you know, they, I think they, hey, whenever I'm presenting, I've got, you know, three to five questions I'm going to ask. And, you know, I think that's kind of in the culture of the, of the chapter. And I think it's a, a good thing for bringing engagement, especially if you say, hey, I'm giving out a gift card at the end <laughs> on top of that. And, and that's, that goes back to the cookie thing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's a little reward for paying attention. And right. it sounds like you're bribing them to keep their attention on you for 10 minutes, but some of that's going to stick. Right. Yeah. You know, and they may be then, we, we don't always know what we remember about stuff like that. I try to take notes, but even when I take notes, mm -hmm. sometimes I forget to look at them later or I, I just get busy right afterward. I mean, it used to be that BNI day was my long day and it was packed with meeting after meeting after meeting because I would go out and be out the entire day because it's so far back from Dayton to my office that it was easier to just stay out. So some of that would just slip my mind. But I think now, in this case, I think we have a better... A better way to do that so so that's about engagement it's about keeping people interested in what's going on so we've got a couple of suggestions here so one of the suggestions is do some kind of a quiz at the end of your thing and offer up a gift uh, some kind of reward um, another one is encourage people to have their cameras on and make sure that they're paying attention to what's going on and, and I don't know what the right way of doing this is I don't like the carrot and the stick mentality. There must be some other way to encourage people because I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's still here. Hold on. I've got a long time ago. This is the golden ruler. Can you guys see this? Uh -huh. So this is, this is a three-sided engineer's rule. And <laughs> this, this was passed to me by another BNI member who decided we needed to stick to the rules. Hmm. And when that person was president, uh, they got this thing and they would <laughs> down on the table when people didn't do stuff. <laughs> Obviously, the product of some sort of uh, religious school upbringing. <laughs> that's, that's some corporal punishment right that's there. That's corporal yeah. punishment going on. And it would be <laughs> so. But you know what? There's a point where you need to fall back on those rules. And, and the only thing, this doesn't work. <laughs> You know, it, the rules are supposed to be our guideline. It's not supposed to be suffocating. I kept it because it's always a reminder that, you know, as precise as this is, people aren't. So, you know, you got to kind of deal with it. But we do I, have one member that uh, he does the introductions for most people for our speakers, and he always adds really funny uh, fake news things that are in there. Nice. Uh, what, one week he had one of our members was traveling with another member as a Sunny and Cher troop in the 70s. You know, so they always have something that will keep you interested during their introductions if you let Fred do them. <laughs> okay, so that's one so thing is humor, I would say, if you can add a little humor or something interesting into your introduction, keep people's attention. 
So the other thing is the structure of, of some of that. So the, I think all of this goes to increasing our referrals. I think this, this stuff will, if you can increase the engagement, you can increase the attention to these details that we put into these presentations. Um, one of the things I made a, a conscious effort, I was, before I started the, the recording of the meeting, I, I told Roger that I had just finished up, I do our, our slideshow for our meeting. And I just finished up changing it. And it occurred to me, in fact, Julie was sitting across me in the office today when I said this, it occurred to me that we call the weekly presentation, a weekly presentation on the slideshow, but on everything else, it's called a sales manager minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm still of the generation that called it a 60 second commercial until somebody realized, wait a minute, we're not supposed to be selling to each other. We're supposed to be teaching each other. Right. So we're educating our sales te team and that's when it became sales management and all that. So I went back through our slideshow and I changed all the things that said weekly presentation to sales manager minute. So I think that the content of these presentations, whether it's your 10 minute speech or if it's your sales manager minute has a huge bearing on that. Plus how do you, if, if you're just winging it every time, you know, I feel like we're, I feel like we're doing MSP all over again here in a little way. Um, just because some of this stuff is so no brainer, but we've gotten disconnected. I mean, we're back to the engagement part of this. We've gotten disconnected from it because I think because of the Zoom calls, once the meeting's over, that's it. We go off and do our thing. Nobody thinks about it again until Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, or sometimes used to be on the way to the meeting. I'm writing out my sales manager minute, right? So I know it sounds like, I don't know, almost parochial or, or school marmish, but do your homework before you go to class, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but I think really because of the way we're doing this, we almost have to be more enforceable. Uh, I don't know if that's right. We need to be more supportive. We need to, we need to be more encouraging to do these things ahead of time. Read the same thing every week. It doesn't matter. I know, I know a couple of people that got, fantastic referrals because they did the same thing every week and one day a visitor came and that visitor knew the guy that they wanted to talk to and that turned into some kind of a five-figure deal for them which was a for one project so that was kind of a big deal but you just don't know how that's going to work um so the where i'm headed with this is if you if you increase the attention span of the audience to pay attention to what you're doing Give them an incentive to be more engaged, um, a reward, the quiz, you know, all these things we talked about. Have some fun with the speaker intro, uh, which we always did in the other chapters. I, we don't do it in ours for whatever reason now, but the other two chapters I was in, we did that a lot. Um, but, you know, after that, it still comes down to what are you saying? How are you teaching us? The only way to increase those outside referrals is to have a really good understanding of what it is you're trying to do. What are you trying to get? I, I, I'm, I'm done with that part. Anybody got to <laughs> please weigh in. I, I like, um, you know, the idea of, you know, and Julie, you're, you're right with that. The humor um, in the introduction or, or, you know, doing a good introduction, um, you know, years ago I was in a Toastmasters group and that was one of the things where, you know, the person that's speaking, can write out their introduction, or at least write out some of the, the bullet points they want to have in their introduction. And that's, that's something that can be passed along. You know, it's kind of the homework that goes along with preparing your presentation is, hey, let me also prepare this introduction and get it to the person that's gonna be introducing. Do you have, I don't know if you guys remember, um, I know I've shown it to Julie. Roger, do you know what the, uh, uh, the paperwork. That, oh gosh, it slips in my mind what it's called now. It has the it has the speaker introduction in it. It has all of your oh the gains forms, the gains yes. package. Yes. Um, this mine's all filled out. I think I emailed it to everybody when I first joined our chapter. Mm -hmm. I did that, and so I because I update it from time to time. It helps me actually because mm -hmm. of the questions that are in there. I almost feel like we need to go back to the basics a little bit. Have everybody fill that thing out and send it to each other. 
Mm-hmm. Well, they do they do have an online bio too. I don't know if you guys have looked on BNI Connect. You can put it in mm-hmm. your bio. They do. That's right. And that's where that came from this document that I'm talking about. Yeah, so it's it's, a, it's similar questions. It's just, it's the same questions. It's it's laid out the same way. But the gains form had all these details. It helped you figure out who your your LCD was. It helped you figure out your your sphere of influence, how, which kinds of businesses work well for you. It helped you answer personal questions that people could then made bases for a better one-to-one mm-hmm. and you know i i feel like the one-to-ones are part of that engagement as well as well you know mm-hmm. doing the one-to-ones and i know it's harder this way i i get it and our best one-to-one guys are the ones who have had COVID. so i'm not going <laughs> <laughs> so but i talk to all of them on a weekly basis not just in the meetings i mean i have i have some of them are clients, some of them are, are more of a, a regular contact. And I think my my only concern with that is that if you inject that kind of humor and using the gains documents, they're there for a reason. They worked really, really well for chapters I was in before because nobody was structuring a one-to-one. You came away from it having had lunch, but then going, eh? Or you do the speaker stuff or the, or the speaker talks and you don't really know what it was they were after at the end. There's no ask. You know, they're not just saying, hey, and I know Roger and I, when I first came in, one of the things I said was, I want to talk to somebody at Huffy. And so people started looking for that. But I don't think we're being specific enough. This is, all goes back to content. So how can we increase those outside referrals if all of these things we're talking about are our sales manager minute, our speaking time, all that is, and, and lack of engagement, not really paying attention to what's going on, all of that is off the charts. Mm-hmm. So how do we fix those things? Yeah. Well, I think we all have to be really diligent about uh, not having one-to-ones with the same three people, you know, getting outside of our comfort zones a little bit, yeah. you know, because I know it's really easy to be like, I'm close with these people, so they'll be my sphere of influence and I'm not even gonna try to get to know this other person because then that other person might be feeling kind of on the outside because nobody's ever, you know, they're not in that group. So step out of your comfort zone a little bit and reach out to the rest of the group that you might not always speak to, especially if you're in one of the larger groups. I think that's a good hint, good advice. That actually has something to do with the whole premise of, of this meeting was that the friend, what I'm going to call fringe, I don't mean that they're not, relevant. I mean that the the chapter members who are not getting the attention that they need or they don't know how to get it or they don't know how to give it. You know, I don't think as great as MSP is, it does not teach you how to be a different person. So <laughs> it teaches you B&I mechanics, but it doesn't teach you, you know, how you put the coveralls on. So there's a whole okay. different kind of thing. But I think if there, if, if people who are better at that, Roger, you're tremendous at that. Julie, you're very good at that. You guys are very personable people. I'm kind of on the line. I, I can, I do it in some ways and not so well in others. And I, I just try to finally say, hey, let's do this. And well, you know, the funny kinda- thing about that is when I first meet people, I am not like that at all. When I first started coming to my and I, I, I have to make myself talk to people. <laughs> Otherwise, I sit back and just kind of stand on the outside and watch everybody. And you don't, you don't get to know anybody that way. So do you, I'm, I'm going to, I think we, I think we've got a couple of things covered there. I'm going to back up a step to attendance. So one of the things that I think people, and this, this will be part of this. I think if we're, what I see a lot of times, and, and I'm not talking about our chapter, Roger, in particular, I'm, I'm talking about having been in this for such a long time. You, you see a pattern that kind of forms in different chapters. Um, they're the engaged and they're the sort of engaged. And then there's the, I'm there on Wednesday mornings. And that's hard to fix. I mean, if somebody's just got that in their head. So Julie, if we, if we look at your attendance problem, you know, if we all pulled the reins back in October and said, okay, you guys are, you get this now. We're into this thing. This is how it's going to be. And we made a conscious decision in our chapter to stay Zoom. I'm so glad. Um, which should make it easier, you know, in, in a lot we, of ways. We actually did try to go back to in person and, and we were not getting enough attendance to justify it. And then we all decided it was better if we just stayed Zoom. 
And there is a core problem right there. So the, the, the enough attendance was partly because of worry about COVID, partly because this works fine. Why do we have to go back to that again? Well, okay, I get that. But is there a point where, and I feel like we need uh, Mark or Daryl or, or one of them to weigh in on this question, but is there a point when you pulled those reins back in October and said, all right, we have to, we've let a lot of stuff go because we're trying to get used to this and everybody's adjusting, mm -hmm. but it's been 10, nine, 10 months now. It's a, we know what we're doing. So there's no excuse for not being in a meeting or not sending a sub or whatever. And do you then, you know, I'm putting this stuff into the, into the system like you're supposed to, and it's sending meeting things out that say, Bob Smith has missed nine meetings, but it's up to the chapter to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. do you start giving people the, the heave ho? They're getting warning letters automatically. Mm. So at what point do you say, okay, that's it. And Julie, you had one that stopped showing up and then just decided you didn't like his referrals and left. Yeah, we had someone who's choosing to not renew, but I haven't seen that person in two months anyway. So they have a legitimate uh, reason at the beginning, but it's been too long now. Yeah, and there's a, so what do we do about that? Is that, especially if, you're, if your chapter is smaller and you're concerned about being shut down, or you're concerned that the smaller the chapter is, the money dries up. I mean, that's right. just how it works. But if the majority of the money is being made by a, a little core group of people and the others are not getting any kind of referrals, and even though they're giving them, they're not getting anything. Right. Uh, what do you do about that? There's, there's like, this is where a membership committee is very important. Yeah. But when you don't have an engaged membership committee, <laughs> um, what do you do? Because then it falls to the vice president to make that decision. I don't want to throw anybody out of our group. That's nuts. I mean, but at what point do you say, hey, guys, I need you to come to this thing. Otherwise, we got a seat open that I'm sure somebody somewhere wants. Yeah. But I don't know, Roger, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there, there, there does come, you know, there does get to be a point and, you know, and it's, it, it's, you know, it's pretty deep to where, you know, it's obvious that there's an issue when you get there, but, you know, where, you know, say, you know, we really need you to come in here um, because they're, they're, you know, there is someone else that, that would like to have that seat. And, you know, um, you know, sometimes it, you know, it gets to where, you know, everyone can see it and you get there and the person says, Oh, I don't want to renew. And, you know, that may be a relief, but, you know, for, for it really, you know, um, before then having the conversations with the people to encourage them, Hey, you know, you know, continue to come back, um, you know, continue to, continue to engage because I think um, for a lot of it, it is a lack of engagement then that that brings on some of the other things. Um, you know, you, you mentioned, um, let's see, uh, people not getting good referrals. I talked to a guy last last week, um, a plumber, was, you know, and with that, I was inviting him to come and participate with, you know, come visit our group. And he said, you know, I was in NBNI some years ago and you know, I, I, I brought good referrals, but, you know, I felt like the only referrals I got from it were internal. And, you know, in that, you know, the big thing is we, we were looking for and for referrals that are, you know, outside of just the small group, right. you know, within the, within the group, you know, people can get, I'll say, more comfort um, to refer you because they see what kind of work you do. But, you know, the big thing is getting outside, outside referrals. And that, that is the key. I think it's great when people work together inside. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. we've all got clients from within our own groups and that's good. And I don't want to change that by any stretch, but I think what that should do is really give you a comfort level of being able to refer somebody. Right. right. And you want to keep working. About, I, the way I've always seen it is that the people inside a chapter will end up working together naturally just by, uh, just by the way that the thing functions and you get to know each other and they have a service that you want and it's just there. But getting the outside referrals is harder. And I think that, those two things come to the growth, how, inviting the visitors. How do you get the visitors in? Um, do those visitors turn into members? How many, and this is a question again for our leadership above us, is our chapters growing? They had a new chapter launched this year during, in the midst of COVID here. And I was just baffled by that. Yeah. But, 
and here we're, we are, I think a very, you can, your chapter can get stale. So it's hard to keep all that going, even in a normal situation. But here we are with this and what do you mean you get a whole new chapter starting over there? How are you doing that? Well, it's core people, you know, yeah. and what the, the, the big names, you know, the, the lawyer and the real estate agent and all that stuff. And you, when you fill that in, then that little box is already full, but you still have the landscaper and the marketing guys and the whoever, and that's all on the outside of that. So how do we, in this time, you will increase those outside referrals by growing the chapter. That's just math. Mm -hmm. How do and we how do, do you, How do you figure we get more visitors when, you know, a lot of us aren't going out of the house. We're not interacting with other people. Does anybody have any great ideas on how to bring more visitors and more potential members in? Well, that used to be a question of about people that had, uh, let me say that in right, the, the better way. We used to get questions in BNI from people who didn't really leave their office that much. Mm -hmm or their shop, or maybe they had, uh, maybe they were a car repair place and they never really left and they didn't go visit people and they didn't do things. So on occasion, that's a problem because they don't see enough people to, to increase that or, or be in a position to say, uh, Hey, um, how's your life insurance? I got a guy for you. You know, it's, it doesn't come up in, in the transaction of selling dry cleaning services or something. So I think those kinds of things are, are hard, but you're right. The issue is um, then comes to the idea that you've, ha you've got this, <laughs> how do you get people to come to the meeting? Okay, first, it's now virtual. There, it's, you don't have to drive anywhere. There's even been discussion of, of taking people from outside the area if we're gonna stay virtual. Right. To get people from outside your typical region that can still work with you. I don't know if that's a great idea because then when we go back, what happens to them? So, um, but the, the meetings are easier to get to. They're easier to manage. Uh, to me as a visitor, my first question, I'm going to be the, I'm always the wet blanket on these things. I know people kind of get irritated by that, but I have to throw this out there. What is the value to me in throwing out, you know, at first, what is it? 600 and some dollars. Mm -hmm. What is the value of that for a, a zoom call? Right. There's, there's five other networking groups out there that charge a quarter of that or less. And it's still just a Zoom call. So what is the value of it? Well, the same things that are always the value of it. You've got the category lockout. You're not sitting there with your competition. These are people who you're going to get to know one way or another, whether it's a Zoom call or whatever, you're going to keep working on it. They're supposed to be as engaged in, as, in it as you are. And there we go back to part one, which is engagement and attendance. Um, and the relationships. And the relationships. You're building that relationship to get to keep those things going. That's the purpose of this. They're putting, you're paying for the right to be in that room, the training, all of the extras that you get for this to teach you how to do networking. Because you don't get that in school. I, I know everybody hears me say that when we talk about B and I and why why it's a big deal. And I'm not, and anybody watching this outside of our, the little group of people that I know, this is going to sound like we're drinking the Kool-Aid around here, but you know, it's, it works. It's stable. It's got all these things in place because they've made the mistakes before now. And here we have this great well oiled machine for the most part. It's got its problems for sure. And it's not for everybody. Um, but when you invite visitors to come to this, uh, how do you do it? What, what are you saying now? Before it was come meet this great group of people who are all trying to grow their businesses, and I think they can help you grow it too. And we might have cookies. <laughs> um, and there'll be prizes, and you know, Roger's going to say something funny. I, I don't know. Do something to get them in there. But we don't have that anymore. Right. So, how do you do that? Is it possible to grow a chapter like ours, like our two chapters are, because they're similar in size, they're similar in makeup? How do we grow that chapter? And, and get the visitors to stay, you know? I mean, are they gonna stick around? Is it, I think I had, let's see if I had something about that. Are they gonna stay around? How does it become a way to attract them? How will you attract them? When you're not seeing other people, especially, you're not seeing as many as you used to maybe. Right. But, yeah, the, the in, inviting them, you know, as as we and that's that's the part. The as we run across people has become a little, you know, 
a little less fluid as it, you know than it was before. But yeah. you know, when you have someone and and you think, hey, let me invite you, you know, and what I what I do is simply, you know, hey, um, you know, have you have you ever um, done networking and would your would your business benefit from getting more referrals? Mm -hmm. And I mean, those are that's simply the question. And people will, yeah, maybe or you know, yeah. it, yes. And from that, then you know, hey, we have a we have an organiz have a group of professionals, all business owners that get together every week, and we talk about our businesses and how to how to re pass referrals back and forth. Um, let me you know, let me inter let me have you come and visit, and you know, right now we're doing it on Zoom. So it's easy, you know, and that's that's pretty much been it. And, and that's a great sales piece is to be able yeah. to say, we're on Zoom. It's easy to come to it. I think mm -hmm. it could be a selling point at this point and be like, look, you don't even have to leave your living room. Here's yeah. this code. You can come for, you know, 45 minutes, an hour and a half, depending on how long your speaker speaks, <laughs> how long your meeting <laughs> is. is 10 <laughs> um but uh, I think it could be a selling point. What do you guys feel about maybe meeting someone you don't know in person since we're in virtual? Do you feel like that's a good idea or a bad idea? Like if you had met someone on LinkedIn and you have a connection with them, do you think it's okay to invite them to a BNI meeting if you haven't met them in person? I can, um, I can tell you that from my experience, the, the, the BNI concept is the reason that you invite people you already know or know something about them is because you are bringing them into a group of people that you have now mm -hmm. cultivated relationships with and you know about their families and you know their, their history and they know something about them. When it's cold like that, it is hard. When we used to have membership drives, that's what I'm going to call it. We had people that would go to the phone. We were required to send out like 40 letters and we had people go into the phone book, pulling out names of anybody. We need plumbers. All right, you, you're going to do plumbers. So we send 40 plumber letters out. <laughs> we send 40 electrician letters out and 40 graphic designer letters out. And, and how many of them showed up? We, so when we did that, we got a considerable number. The problem was nobody knew them. Right. So you really are, now your membership committee is carrying the burden on their shoulders. They really have to do their due dil diligence. If you have a lackluster membership committee, it may not work. If you guys are willing to do the hard work and go, all right, we're going to look into these people. I understand. I don't know them. You know, Roger could say, I'm bringing this photographer. I don't know him very well, but you know, I, I, he was connected to me on LinkedIn, said, hello, would you like to meet our group? Blah, blah. And he shows up. Well, if it goes sour, everybody's going to look at Roger. <laughs> yeah. No matter what. Right. somebody works with him he's sort of vouched for him and then it goes badly that makes yeah that does reflect on you so that is a good point you got to make sure you know somebody well enough to but take your own reputation on it that said the world is different now mm -hmm. so i wonder if if you can if you can have the membership committee when you come in you can tell if somebody in person you can tell if somebody's a good fit usually by the if they come a second time you, you've got a pretty good handle on it mm -hmm. if here it's harder because I can be, this is me, <laughs> this is the whole, and it could simply be because I can't see the screen, mm -hmm. but I look like I'm scowling the whole time. Yeah. We can't read people on this. Yeah, it's a little hard. So, Roger, I think you were going to say something. What What did you have to throw in? Yeah, um, typically for, for someone I'm inviting, it, you know, is someone I've, I've met with at least once, um, you know, for, for the plumber, you know, um, he came to do that, you know, that, but, you know, he's, heck, he's been, been here at the house, I think, two other times. And, and I know that, you know, from that, and, and then he's done other work in other places for me. And, and, you know, I know from their business, you know, um, after you've, you've done a few things, they send you, you know, they send you a, a newsletter card and say, hey, for next time, you know, tuck this away and get 10% off the next time you call us, you know, those kinds of things. Um, you know, even the photographer in the park that I met, you know, still, you know, was going to move to talking with her before I invited her to come in. Um, right. You know, that thing is, is crucial because you do want to find out something about them. You want to know, 
you want to know kind of, you know, how their business runs or if, the, you know, how long have they been doing it? You know, those kinds of things. So, so effectively you have a one-to-one -one with them first. Have a one-to-one -one with them. So, yeah. At least do some due diligence and some research and get to know them yourself. Right. That's a good, that's a good advice. I don't think sure. it's a bad idea to do a little cold inviting so long mm -hmm. as, you, as, as you've done that. If you've talked to them one time or at least one time mm -hmm. and you get a good feel from them, that's one thing. Yeah. Uh, there are people I, I can, I realized that a, a lot of people, um, we have a number of what I would call multi-level marketing companies in BNI. It's mm -hmm. not that it's not that high of a number because one of their focuses, and, I, and I'm not putting it down, I'm simply saying one of their focuses is to try to entice you to join their business model mm -hmm. to sell stuff. And the problem I have with that is I'm already a business owner here. If the person, if, if that person I know might, I think would be a good fit, I have to say, all right, look, this is great. But remember that all these people in this room are business owners. They already have something to do. They're not looking for this part. Talk about your product. Sell us on your product. We'll get you in the door with the people that you want. Then you can sell them. And if someone inside the group wants to be a part of your, your downline or whatever, then they'll, they'll jump on it. You don't need to worry about it. And, and that always works very well. People are very understanding of that if they're good and professional. And that is not just that type of business. That is every type of business. Yep. I think so that kind of thing would happen organically over time. You don't really have to push right. it. That's Once right. they get to know you, they, they'll be curious about, you know. It, it always works. We had a Juice Plus person in my BNI for many years who, was, who switched from one type of business into Juice Plus and did very successfully made the transition because we already trusted her. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't trying to sell us on the, the model of the business. She was trying to help us understand what it did and how the, the, she bought into it because she liked it and the product was good for her. Mm -hmm. And that made it easier to say, oh, oh you want to do that? Well, I know somebody who does that. Here's you know, her name. So And I think, we ran into someone who wasn't quite as scrupulous about the truth selling similar product. We did. Yeah. And that, that puts a bad taste in your mouth. And that was so a, that was run a into marketing group. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was very hard. And, and I had my person that I knew who sold that stuff, that same product mm -hmm. was furious because mm -hmm. you always have a bad person. I mean, you, if you work in the car repair business, your reputation is sullied already because of every other bad shade tree mechanic out there, right? You yeah. got to, you got to prove yourself the first time. So, and I ran into the same thing in computer work. I run into the same thing in marketing. It, it's very similar no matter what. There's always a bad seed. Weeding out the bad seed is up to us when we invite someone. Yeah. Then the big back end due diligence has got to be the, the membership committee and the membership chair or the committee members have to be able, okay with saying, I don't think they're a good fit. Mm -hmm. But we, I, I'm worried that we feel a little desperate right now. Yeah. And and we're all feeling a little desper desperate in different ways right now. I know that, but we want to grow our chapters. We want to make these things work better. So how do you increase the number of quality visitors and who do the, who is that person? I mean, like the, the, when I say quality visitor, I think somebody who actually gets that they need to market and that this is one of the best ways to do it in the time of COVID because you, you're building a relationship. It's not a cold call. I mean, I got a, I don't know where it is. I got a book here that says that as a, co as a copywriter, I should be making a hundred cold calls a day. Mm. Out of that, you're going to get five days of work. That's 500 cold calls. You're going to get maybe one guy who says, okay, I'll take a meeting. That's a very low hourly rate. <laughs> That's a very low hourly rate. You have already wasted it. If you get the one job, it better be a super paying job, but it'll pay off eventually, right? Roger, you're a salesperson. You know how this works. Yep. It's all about numbers. So how do we increase the potential for a quality visitor? And, and it's not about the category, I don't think. I, I don't think it's the type of business. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's the individual. And because we're not interacting as much mm -hmm. in person, how do we do that? How do we fix that problem? Yeah, that... That's the one that that's, you know, that's, I'll call that the, the um, $64,000 question. Um, yeah. One of those things, you know, is, you know, um, being intentional and, you know, it's being intentional throughout the chapter of, you know, Hey, let's, let's all go out and find, you know, whether it's all go out and find one to invite 
um, or you know just concentrating and that's what we we're, we're trying to do um, you know it's it's a, a change in the culture of hey let's all invite someone this month um, you know that's I think that's why we're on here right now um, yeah. we're looking at how to change the culture of the chapters um, to where okay we're we're looking at who is it that that we can invite who do we know who is it that they know who can refer someone to us that that we ought to be hey come take a look at at bni um you know there are a lot of businesses out there and right now you know this is a time where i think for a number of businesses especially you know the the restaurant and and meeting styled businesses you know they're they're having a real tough time yep yeah. um, and that's not going to get any easier anytime soon either it doesn't uh, no, and I think, and some of that, you know, some of that they're having a tough time, and you know, I think they're, they're, um, you know, th this 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 time that we're in, where I think skepticism is, you know, is running rampant, <laughs> um, and I say that um, back, you know, last year I went to a bridal show, um, and you know, all all people who, and this was before COVID, this was like. Um, Oh man, this was probably four weeks before the shutdown, um, and there met a number of business owners. And from that, you know, a lot of them, you know, they're they're looking for their, you know, who they could they were looking for who they could book a wedding with. But as far as hey, you know, let's talk and I want to learn more about your business. You know that that um, you know replies and things like that. You know, most of them were were you know kind of oh don't know and i understand right then they're probably working all those leads they got from the from the trade show yeah right. you know, but then you know once covid started to set you know once the shutdown happened i think a lot of them you know it was a punch in the gut and it you know it scared them to where now they oh no i i need to figure out what i'm doing before i can talk to anyone um, i think also some people don't get the the, the value of the network uh networking kind of advertising because I, I know that there are people I know there are people that don't understand why I spend so much time on this mm -hmm. but it really comes back to when I started my business you know it's been almost 24 years now and and I think about what that looked like I had no idea how to do any of this mm -hmm. you know it was just I knew how to do the job I did and I knew how to cold call I mean <laughs> that's not real hard yeah. but I didn't know how my business was going to evolve. And now here we are almost entirely dependent. Our, our company is almost entirely dependent on referrals. Mm -hmm. We have to be sent to someone else. I can very rarely reach out and say, Hey, here we are. This is what we do. It's funny for a marketing firm that has a hard time marketing because you, you it doesn't work that way. You market a, an advertising agency or marketing firm by sponsoring things, by, by hosting a, a little league team, by all the, you know, your billboard is up over here because you, you put a program ad in the, in the Philharmonic this year or something. That's how that works. And without networking and being out there and involved in things, that makes it harder. So like you said, with COVID, all bets are off now. It, it is very, very different. So do we then uh, or are we looking at the right categories, first of all? Um, well, I, I know one thing that I stole from subbing at one of your meetings for your chapter is that you guys have announced during the meeting what the open classifications are. Mm -hmm. So people think about it like out loud, you know, we need this, per we need plumbers, we need electricians. We don't have anyone in this particular category because that might jog somebody's memory and be like, oh, I do know someone who does that. I think I that's think helpful in to our, announce you know, it out I think loud. Also, sometimes people go back to the same well, and they go back to the same companies. There, there was a restoration company that was in our chapter for a long time, and I hear people talk about them. I never met those folks. I'm sure they're fine, but they've already said no, and one somebody from that group has already joined another BNI chapter right. because it worked better for them. Why are we going back to that well? Let it go. Move on to another restoration company. There's got to be more. I mean. <laughs> That goes with stepping out of your comfort zone again, is getting to know more yeah. people inside those categories. Throw a rock and hit a surf pro guy. That's what I used to say. I mean, it's 
there's got to be something. Else. And I realize we don't want to always work with the big corporate guys, but honestly, I would like to see larger businesses in our chapter. I would like to see uh, a representative, a higher place representative from a larger company on occasion. I like that we're all, uh, most of us are independent, but we have people in our group who work for other companies. Um, most of them function like their own thing. Um, Roger, your business works that way. I mean, you, you do your own mining and your own sales and everything, but you work for another company and, and that's not an unusual thing. That's, I work for my company too, but at the same time, I'm, I want those larger, those larger accounts because we have an expensive service in a lot of cases and I get that. And that's, it's not about price. It's about how much can we do for them? I can't help somebody who has such a limited budget that they go for you know three weeks of advertising and they burn out their 500 bucks. They have nothing left. Well, that's, that's not gonna be helpful to them. I, I'm wasting both of our time. So when we're inviting people, we should, we should also look at not just the categories. Is it the right category? Which, which direction are we going with the chapter? Is it trades heavy right now? And by trades, I'm talking about plumbers, contractors, you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it marketing heavy? Do we have a web designer? We have a graphic designer. Do we have a, uh, you know, all those things. Is it service heavy? Mm -hmm. Do we have an AC guy? Do we have, you know, what does this look like? Sometimes you have to decide what your chapter is going to look like before, before you get started mm -hmm. and then give everybody else. Okay, guys, we're looking for these three categories. Go find them. And Sometimes that works really well. We used to do what we called stack days, which were visitors days with a single category in mind. So we would, I remember one we did landscaper. I think we had four or five landscapers show up. And the idea was to generate competition for that seat. Yeah. It works. And eventually, you know, I, I, I luck out when I walk into a space like that, I'm generally the only one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm usually the only marketing person, certainly the only writer. So it's usually easy for somebody like me to do that, but you get five or six landscapers in the room. These guys tend to be pretty, pretty competitive. So if you're able to go, we have one seat and we need to get your applications today because there's five of you generate that, generate that. Why not? You know, but we have to decide again, I'm kind of lost the point. The, the whole purpose of that was what is that going to look like? Are we looking for the right categories? Julie, you said that we, we say the categories that we're, we're after. We have them on our agenda. Everybody gets the agenda every week in their email. And at the bottom, it has all the open classifications. And on the screen that we're showing every week, I always put for Roger, it has the list of four or five of them. I just pick the top five or six uh, sometimes and just stick them on there. But it's too random. Like maybe we need to ask everybody, who do you want here? Take a vote. Who would be your best and I think we did this. We didn't get much of a response, but that was a while ago. It's before COVID for sure. Who would be a great referral source for you? Not somebody you're trying to sell to, but somebody who would bring you into something else. So maybe that's the direction to go. I, I don't know. I think it depends on your chapter and you're going to have to figure out what you're missing. But I think that's going to have to be a coordinated effort. One person can't make that choice. No, I think definitely as a group, you got to figure out what you want to want your profile of your chapter to look like if you're going to go off in another direction. That should be a group decision. So we're heading it about 10 minutes after the hour. So we have about five or six more minutes to go because we started a little bit late. But um, from that, I think the next uh, the next thing that we have is, okay, where do we go next? What's the next thing? We're going to have another one of these for sure. Um, I, I think this time of year is hard to do this, but I, I think this has been pretty productive. I've got some good ideas here that you guys have thrown out. Um, what do you do with them now? What do we do with these great ideas, Mr. <laughs> President? How should we handle this? Yeah, um, you know, with it, I think, you know, going back to our, our you know, our chapters and, and, you know, looking at the notes here fine okay well what what one or two things can can we do like right now before we go on the christmas break um you know and and that would be you know things like okay hey let's identify a vertical that you know or a couple verticals that we want to hey ask 
who knows someone in this in this area because you know I'll bet there there are people in the chapter that know someone in in the open seats or in a couple of the open seat spots that could be hey maybe we should talk to them um, you know not necessarily restoration but <laughs> for, <laughs> right so, you know for 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 that I think that's that's one of the areas and then um, you know getting you know, the the rehashing of the importance of being engaged throughout. I think that's something that we've talked about that is that is a a very high item that that needs, you know, some attention. Being engaged to where, you know, you're on and if you're on if you're on with a camera, you know, turn it on. <laughs> and, yeah. and and keep it on for the whole meeting. You know, I understand if you've got to get up and do something, but um, you know, we've had um I guess, you know, we've had people that say, oh, you know, I'm I'm not, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not pretty enough today because of this. And you know, I've well, got this every day, and yeah. I'm stuck with it. It's <laughs> not going to change. <laughs> right. so, like, <laughs> I wake yeah. up this pretty. Yes, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's what I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you know, he, he said that, but you know, he's always as pretty as he's going to be. <laughs> it's not going to get any better. Yeah, it's just like, put a ball cap on and move on. I mean, it's, right. and, and you know, that's the thing. There's a, I, I was showing, I think I showed Julie this, this Folgers coffee commercial out, out now where the camera. You, you I see, love that one. Camera's pointed kind of down. And you see. I it. showed you that commercial and you let He's in his the camera's pointed at the guy's thigh. Yeah. Oh, not that one. Your whole meeting sees your upper thigh. Like, yes. So, you know, <laughs> There's pants. We're good. You know, oh. ways of, <laughs> I don't care. You know, honestly, I don't care what somebody's got on from the waist down. Look like you, at least you made the effort to button your shirt. Yeah. And I don't right. care. It's really just because this is all smoke and mirrors <laughs> in a lot of ways. It's and all the, really good lighting. <laughs> very good lighting. I'm, you know, it's we're in a bunker in a hole somewhere. <laughs> right. And with the this is actually my desk here it's not a prop or anything so it's just like <laughs> this is just how it works but i think with with that you may also need to and, and i'm going to throw this back at roger because he's my my president so i can do this um <laughs> the and now he's going to go on twitter and say things um <laughs> what i think probably the presidents need to do is instruct their their um I think this falls under the president, but whoever, whichever, I think it should start with you, is instruct the education coordinator to do to talk about the engagement side of it, of what you should do during the meeting, you know, and this is this is like out of respect for the entire membership. Pay attention. I mean, why we've we have busy lives. I mean, some of us have kids at home and we're trying to deal with that while we're doing all of this. We want to keep up our business. We want to keep our work going. And I, if I feel like I'm doing my 10 minute presentation and all the screens go to iPhone four, yeah. you know, there's no person, there's no name. There's no, I don't care anymore. Like, why am I yeah. bothering? So I'm just being cynical here. I don't really feel like that, but I, it, but it is frustrating <laughs> when you put a lot of time into a, a presentation you're trying to help people understand how you can be helpful and what we can do to help you because that's the point right the back and forth I think those things are really a big deal and I, I don't think we're doing that as well as we should and, and I know a lot of times education coordinators get thrown into the deep end and just say here come up with whatever and that's fine I, but I have a great education coordinator right now last week we matched on everything that we were talking about and we hadn't even discussed it we both ended up with positive attitude as our theme for the week and we didn't even know we were doing it so it worked out really well the, the quote and the, the uh the my chapter goals thing i went over and the quote and her thing all went together it was like perfect <laughs> and, I, and i think things like that can really help especially you know i i often came out of the gate with uh, I think one one time I did it. How can I help you month? And the whole idea was every meeting was someone had to uh, say how they can help you, or someone else had to say, "I am trying desperately to get in to talk to this guy," and let us know your pain points. You know, help help the chapter know that that's what your sales force is for. I don't think we think of it that way. I think it's a guy to go to lunch with. 
I think it's a, you know, I, I know I can get my house painted. I think I can, you know, whatever that happens to be. I don't think that is really something that people think about that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we're here to help each other. I think that's the thing. Also, especially now, and I, I know that in the old days, I don't know if they used to frown on it or people just sort of talked about it that way, but they didn't like BNI chapters to collaborate because oh. it, you immediately put two real estate guys in the same room or two marketing guys in the same room. And it, well, we get that. We're going to sort of assume that and say, okay, we, we're going to play nice for a minute and go, how do we fix this? We're all having the same problem. Well, so I when we initially thought about doing this, I wasn't sure how they were going to feel about whether or not people would want to be in the same meeting. Well, I think the response, I mean, not. the response was good. I think with the timing, I kind of threw it at them time-wise. So it, it's it okay. Pretty, for a little pretty quick turnaround. So. But I, I wanted to mention something really quick before we come to the end. And then I'd like each of you to give me a final thought. Um, do have you ever, any of you ever seen this before? No. The BNI Visitor Experience. No. It's a set of CDs. I think one's missing. It's in on my other desk, but it's a set of CDs that uh, a company called Del Fuego Publishing put out about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, I can't find the, the date on it, but this was meant for BNI members. And it's hard to find. You can probably find it on Amazon now. They may be selling them. I don't know. But I was going to try to find a way to have, we used to have a chapter uh, copy of this that we kept in our library. Remember chapter libraries where we had all the books? <laughs> we don't do that anymore with COVID, but. Um, we have a box. The box should have <laughs> the books in and all the Ivan Meisner books or a lot of them. But this was designed um, to literally help you get stuff in. Uh, what, se- what is the secret to turning visitors into members? Is it when you invite? Is it who you invite? Is it how you invite? Is it the visitor's experience at your chapter meeting? Is there more? And there's a whole bunch of questions that they answer. Uh, Dr. Meisner's on here, other people they interview. It, it's, it's really helpful. I'm, I'm kind of upset this went out of print mm. because um, this was a partnership that B and I had with, the, with this publishing company, I believe for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know the whole backstory, but but at it would one be point, nice if it's available digitally. That would be really helpful. I don't know that it was ever available digitally, but go take a look and see if you can find it. Um, uh, I can give you the ISBN numbers. Let's put that out there. It is 0 975 9557 7 2. Maybe you can put it in the chat so it's written. Yeah. Down. I, 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 you know, I'll do that right now. Let's see. Um, uh, where's the chat? There's a chat. Okay, so this was made by Del Fuego. Um, the visitor experience, the BNI visitor experience is what it's called. And it's an audio CD. It's a little bit like listening to a podcast. Mm-hmm. before podcasts were cool a low budget podcast yeah and <laughs> this was a great way um prehistoric podcast that's what this very prehistoric yes uh so i think these kinds of things are are very helpful if if indeed it still exists but what i loved about it at the time was we had a we actually made it mandatory that people all bought one and we found ways to give like little spa scholarships hmm. so people could buy it and have it um, but at any rate, uh, this all came from BNI and, and it talks a lot about how to take things to that next step. If you're having trouble getting people to, to visit the meeting and then what happens afterward. So, mm-hmm. um, I think what we'll do now, uh, I'd like to get your guys last final thoughts on things and then, uh, we'll adjourn and, um, I'll publish this somewhere. I need to talk to our, uh, director folks and see where they would like me to put it. Um, but I appreciate your time. And, and I know it wasn't a lot of people, but I feel like we got a whole lot of people. This would get very complicated. So um, Roger, let me start with you. Uh, give us a final thought on all this. What, what do we have a takeaway from this? All right. Um, you know, my takeaway is, is, you know, that, you know, I think, I think um, both of our chapters are at a point where we, we need to do something. And so this is where I see it as being intentional. Um, increasing our engagement of the members. And then from that, 
um, I think it will, you know, also lead to us going out and looking for people to visit, meaning um, doing things, you know, with the education coordinator where they're talking about, um, you know, who's needed and even some, you know, I'll say even some, some training and some talk about, you know, hey, here's a resource where you can go and, you know, look at how the visitor experience should be or how, to, how, how we use visitors to grow our chapter. Um, you know, main thing, again, um, engagement, be there for the meeting, camera on and engaged, you know, paying attention and, um, you know, and if you, if you can't make it, send a sub. You know, um, you may send the sub that, that you know, you may send a sub that's from the bottom of our agenda where we have some, some subs, you know, ready to come in. But, um, you know, those, those are, the, those are the, the bigger things, I think, just to help us overall. Great, thanks. Julie? Um, I think my biggest takeaway is just to be an example to the rest of the members, to teach them how to be, how to have a good attitude about it and to, you know, increase your own engagement. Mm -hmm. That way when people see that you're excited about the meeting and you brought something to it, you put some time into it, they're going to want to put some time into it. You know, so when it's your own turn to speak, have a visual aid, have a quiz, you know, keep people interested. I try and make sure that my quotes are interesting or entertaining or funny, just at least so that they have something to, you know, connect to, like Roger said, just staying engaged and trying to get people to be excited about it, you know? I, I keep thinking of those old, like in movies, you see the sales huddles, you know, and everybody's all doing high fives and they're like, yeah, go team. But like that, the spirit of that, we can still do without being so silly. <laughs> So is there, um, my thing with it would have been really, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I can get a little cynical about it. I can get a little bit, come on people, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just do this? Or, you know, but we all get like that about different things. And I think we're all behind the eight ball and there are some businesses doing very well right now. There are some businesses very much in a struggle for survival. And I think that struggle you can sit around and blame who you want to, the government or the COVID or, you know, the, the block of cheese in your refrigerator if you want to. It's not going to matter who you blame. Here we are. So we need to deal with that. And I think we have the best possible options for dealing with that because of who we are and what we have, this connection that we have that we've spent all this time and money on. And BNI and is an investment for me. It's the amount of time that I spend on it that is far greater than the check that I write every year. And I think that we have the smart people here in these groups to be able to solve these problems. And maybe other chapters aren't having these issues. I don't know. But I really think that even if the chapter itself is not struggling, there are members inside that are. And I think if we can help come up with ways to do this in our chapter and kind of be a, a guiding light to those out there that are watching and trying to figure it out, if we can do that in our, our own little chapters, just here in the middle of Dayton nowhere, I think that will be a big deal because it's going to help other people. That's what we're in this for. That's what it's supposed to be. It isn't just, I mean, I want to make money as much as the next person, but I can't do that if I'm not able to help other people too. Right. So I think if we can keep working on that, spend the time that we need to understand what the problems are in the chapter. If people aren't engaged, ask them why they're still here. If you don't want to do it, you know, I, I'm, Julie's got a look on her face because she knows what I'm about to say. Don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can be very straightforward about that because if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I don't want anybody to be sitting in that chair who doesn't want to be because someone else will and they will well, do that, it. That was the other thing I was going to mention is just be supportive of other people's struggles right now because right. Uh, you never know how you might be able to help them without even realizing you have the power to help them. You might just say the right thing to them on the right day and they're having a really hard time it could be the very thing like i said earlier when you say how can i help you is the best way to start any conversation and not from a sales standpoint i'm talking about just in general when you get into that meeting you know i want to i want to make my my sales manager a minute go how can i help you guys what can i do to make things easier for you if it's part of my job then you can pay me for it 
if it's me dropping by with, you know, lemonade packets for your kids and leaving them in, you know, sealed things with my mask and my respirator on so you don't have to see me, cool. Is there some way, especially now, I mean, whether you celebrate a holiday like Christmas or not, it's nice to see for a couple of weeks, people be a little nicer to each other. Yeah. So here we are going into this. Let's keep thinking about this. I will schedule another one of these sessions and we'll publish this information, let people see what it is. And I'm going to, I'll be stopping the recording pretty soon, but I wanted to just thank both of you for attending and I appreciate your responses and your interest in this. And we all three work pretty closely together. So I, I think it's important that, that we have a good handle on it and hopefully we can set some examples. So um, thanks to everybody and we will see you in the next session. Mm -hmm.